Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is count the number of subarrays having product less than k and it is a medium level problem. So the problem statement is again very short and simple. I would say that it is quite similar to yesterday's problem and before starting the problem discussion, I would like to thank you all for uh, keeping such an engagement in, this, in these videos. I see a lot of comments, some of them are like appreciating the content and some of them are often doubts and queries about the questions. I really appreciate your thoughts and uh, I see a lot of comments uh, where, uh, where they ask for a specific thing and I will be trying my best to include all of the things possible in these videos. So let us start with today's problem discussion. Now this particular problem says that we have been given an array of positive integers and we have to find the number of possible contiguous subarrays having product less than the given number. Right. So k is the given number and we have to find the number of subarrays in which the product of the, all the numbers is less than this particular number. Right. So let us have uh, this particular problem or this particular test case and discuss this what the problem statement wants to say. So you see that we have four numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. So you will see if you take 1, so this is the product is obviously less than 10, it is good. 1 and 2, the product is 2, so it is less than 10. If you take 1, 2 and 3, the product is still less than 10. Now, if you take 1, 2, 3 and 4, it is not going to be less than 10, right? So, this is not valid. So, can we take 2, 3 and 4? No, we cannot take it. So, instead we are going to take 3 and 4. It is still not going to work, right? So, let me just erase this because these are not valid, right? So, now what is the other one that we can take? The other one that we can take is 2. We can obviously take 2 and 3 and we can take 3 and we can take 4. So, I believe these should be 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, right. So, you see there are 7 subarrays whose product is less than 10, right. So, it has to be strictly less than 10, right. So, uh, like uh, uh, in the beginning of the video itself, I said that uh, this problem is quite similar to yesterday's problem. So, how is it similar? Right. To solve these problems, you need two things. So, let me just write those two things. So, first of all, you will need an, an intuition that this problem can be solved with two pointers. So, basically, uh, two pointers and sliding window is, are almost say, the same thing. It's just that when we talk about the general definition of sliding window, they say that the size of the windows is always fixed and in two pointers, the size of that window is variable, right? So, we are just moving two pointers independently. Now, the second thing is an observation, observation how this problem can be solved with two pointers, right? So, these are the two things that I believe that you should have to solve this particular problem. Now, uh, coming to the first part, how we can build the intuition to know that this problem can be solved with two pointers. I got this question a lot like yesterday itself. So, the answer to this question is not very simple. I would say that it is more about practicing these types of question. So, in order to solve problems which involve two pointers, you would need to solve a couple of problems which involve two pointers, right? So, when you solve these problems, when you solve a lot of them, let us say you solve 5 to 10 problems just with two pointers, right? You will get an idea, a pattern will form into your mind and the next time you see a similar problem, you would be able to like guess it that this can be solved with two pointers. So, with any uh, technique in programming, you need to take care of one thing that let us say I had thought that this, could, this, this can be solved with two pointers. Now, I need to prove that this can be solved with two pointers. I will have to look at the constraints of the problem and analyze the problem and then figure out whether it can be solved with two pointers or not. Right. So, let us say this particular problem can be solved with two pointers. Now, the second part is that an observation how that this problem can be solved with two pointers. Right. This is the part I am talking about. I need to figure out whether it can be actually solved with this particular method or not. If not, then I will have to move to some other method and then try the same thing with that particular method. This is how you would generally solve any problem. First of all, you would need to identify any technique which can be applied to this particular problem and then you would need to observe or you would need to figure out a way whether this problem can be solved with that particular technique or not. So, this intuition part is very difficult. I cannot explain you why I use two pointers because this is just one of the things that came to my mind. 
I can explain you the second part, which is how this problem can be solved with two pointers. For the first part, you will have to practice a lot of problems. And when you uh, practice some problems on two pointers, then the next time you encounter a similar problem, you will be able to identify it. Right? This is the only way I believe for that regard. So let us discuss the second part on uh, how we can uh, try to solve this problem with two pointers. Right? So let me just create an array. Now the problem is, let's say we have two pointers right, like this. Right? How do we count the number of subarrays? Because this is our original task. Right. So for this, let me just write some values first. So let's say there is a value uh, 2, then we have 3, then we have 4, then we have uh, let's say 2 again. Right. So these are our 4 values. Let's say we have already counted the number of subarrays contributed by these values 2, 3 and 4. And let's say the value of k in this case uh, 4 into 3 is 12, 12 into 2, 24, and 24 into 2, 48, right. So let's say the value of k is 50, right. Now I have already counted the subarrays contributed by these three values, right. Let's say it is some value x, right. Now I will be in a state where my left pointer is at this position and my right pointer is at this position. Now I try to move my right pointer one time to the right. Now I need to check whether the whole product is still satisfying the condition or not. So I already checked it. This is 6 and 6 into 4, 24 and 24 into 2, 48. That is why I took this number 50, right? So uh, you will see that the whole product is 48 and it is still satisfying the condition that it is less than 50. Now I know this whole subarray is now a valid subarray. But I need to find out what is the contribution made by this new 2 that has been added to our old subarray, right? Because I already know that x is the uh, contribution made by the old subarray, right? So x is the contribution made by this particular subarray. This is the number of subarrays I can form from these three elements. Now I include a new element. I need to find out the contribution by made by this new element, right? So this is my task and this is my whole problem that I need to figure out if I'm trying to solve this problem with two pointers, right? So this is my primary task. Now you will observe that the number of subarrays contributed by this particular new element is going to be the position of right pointer minus position of left pointer plus 1. So this is essentially the size of the whole subarray. In this case, it is 4. Now, how is it 4? You will see that this subarray is itself an element. So it is going to contribute 1. Right. So now the next subarray is these two elements. The third subarray is these three elements. And the fourth subarray is these four elements. Right. So you will see that the number of subarrays contributed by the newly added element is equals to the size of the new subarray that is r minus l plus 1. In this case, it is going to be 4. Right. Let's say the next element was 1. The next element was 1. So now the new product is still going to be 48. Now the total subarray contributed by this new element is going to be 5. Right. Because this is one subarray. This whole is one subarray. These three is one subarray. These four are one subarray, and the five elements is again one subarray. So the total subarrays are five, right? So let's say for these three sub uh, elements, I already said that the number of subarrays contributed by them is equal to x. Now the subarrays contributed by two was four, and the uh, subarrays contributed by one was five, right? So the total number of subarrays for these five elements is going to be x plus four plus five, right? And with a similar thought, you could have also derived the value of x starting from 2. Right. So this is as simple as it is. Now, we discussed one part that what happens when we try expanding the range or moving our right pointer. But we haven't yet discussed what happens when we try to contract our range. Right. So let's say, let's say, let's, let me just erase all of this now. So let's say this element was not there. Right. So, now, initially the value of k was 50. Now, let us take a, some smaller value. So, the total product here is 48, right? So, 48 by 2 is 24. So, let me take the value equals to 25, right? So, in this case, what will happen is, when you try to include this particular element, for these three elements, the, uh, the product is 24 and the value of k is 25. So, it is valid. But when I try to include this new 2, then it will become 48. So, it will, it will be invalid, right? So let's say 
you your pointers are like this one is left pointer is at the leftmost position and the right pointer is here right the current product is 48 so definitely it is not a valid array right or valid sub array now you would want to decrease this product for decreasing this product you will want to move your left pointer to the right so that the number of elements decrease and the overall product gets decreased right so what happens now you would move this pointer to the left now the product the product overall product will get divided by 2 so 48 will get divided by 2 and the product will become 24 right since the product of this whole sub array has now become 24 it is going to be a valid sub array now again i need to find the contribution made by this particular newly added 2 you will see that the way we look at the problem has changed a little bit because instead of moving the right pointer now we are moving the left pointer but the overall problem is essentially the same because there are two elements there are two elements for which i have already calculated the contribution made by them and there is one element for which i have not calculated the contribution made by it right so these blue elements are the elements for which i have already calculated the contribution and this white element is the element for which i have not calculated yet right so let's say this time for these two elements the contribution made by them is y so what will be the contribution made by this particular 2 so yes if you are thinking it it is going to be 3 it is absolutely correct it is still going to be the same as r minus l plus 1 it's just that the value of l has changed here and in this case this value r minus l plus 1 is going to be 3 because there are 3 elements so if we have 3 4 and 2 like this so one sub array will be like this second sub array will be like this and the third sub array will be like this right so you see the way we looked at the problem has changed because we are moving a different pointer now but the overall problem was essentially the same because for 3 and 4 we have already calculated the number of sub arrays contributed by them now we need to calculate the number of sub arrays contributed by the newly added element right so for that we can calculate it by calculating the size of the sub array total sub array so i hope that you guys were able to understand this part and let us discuss an overall algorithmic view of this particular problem what you need to do so let's say you have an array so let's say this is some array so let's say this these are some values a b c d e f g you will start your pointers from here so let's say this is the left pointer and this is the right pointer so currently the product is going to be a right a element itself now if this product let's say it is greater than k right greater than or equals to k that means it is not a valid sub array so what you are going to do is you're going to move both your left and right pointers one step right so now your product is going to be b instead of a right now let's say b is a valid sub array so what is the size of the sub array it is going to be one so you will add one to your answer now you move your right pointer one step to the right now the product is going to become b into c right now let's say this b into c is still less than or equals to k that means you will have to add 2 to your answer because the whole size of the sub array is 2 now and what is what are the new sub arrays that are being contributed by c they are c and bc right so these are the two sub arrays that are being contributed now let's say i again try to move my right pointer to the right again let's say that's b into c into d is still less than is still less than k again we are going to add 3 to our answer now let's say i try to move my right pointer again but now b into c into d into e is greater than or equals to k that means it is not going to be a valid sub array so what i'll do here is i'll increment my left pointer so when i increment my left pointer b will be removed from the product and then i'll have to check whether c into d into e is a valid sub array or not or if it is less than k or not right now if it is less than k the size of the sub array is 3 so i will again add c to my answer Right. and i will keep on continuing this process till my right pointer reaches this last position n right so this was the whole approach of this particular problem now one very important thing which uh, i missed and uh, because of which i made a few wrong submission like the value of the product the value of the product should be taken in long long this just uh, slipped my mind while i was submitting the problem i knew this beforehand but uh, while submitting i made this mistake that the value of the product should be taken in long log. I'll tell you why. Because uh, you see, if you look at the constraints, the value of a of i is 10 raised to the power 5 and the value of n is 10 raised to the power 6. So the maximum product, the maximum product that you can have is 10 raised to the power 5 into 10 raised to the power 6. Uh, so it is uh, overall going to be 
10 is power 11 right so it is obviously greater than integer integer range so that is why you will have to take log log right so that's it uh, let me just explain you the code now so i've taken two oh, three integers l r and answer so l and r are the left and the right pointers respectively and answer is the value that is that are we going to return so each of them is initialized with zero and i initialize my product with the element pre present at position zero right so i make a simple while loop while r is less than n and i check whether product is less than k if it is less than k that means the whole subarray is a valid subarray so i will need to add the number of subarrays contributed by my newly added element so that is going to be answer plus is equals to r minus l plus one right now i increment my right pointer and if right pointer is less than n i add the value to my product right so i'm just doing product multiplies equals to a of r otherwise if the product is greater than or equals to k that means i have to move my left pointer one step right so i'll have to remove that particular element from my product so that is why i divide a of l normally what i do i just like increment my left pointer but if l is equals to r that means i'll have to increment my right pointer as well so i increment it and whenever i increment my right pointer i make sure that, it, that if it is less than n i add the newly added value to my product so i multiply a of r with product right so this is just the same thing that i do here whenever i am incrementing my right pointer i just uh, uh, use the current value and multiply it with my product so once again why am i incrementing this right pointer because if both l and r are at the same position i will have to increment both of them right so at the end after this while loop is completed i can just return my answer so let me just quickly submit it and show you that this particular solution works so you see that it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems so i see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet in case you're one of them then definitely consider subscribing it's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later so share the channel with your friends until the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye, -bye.